Welcome Base Camp Online. I'm so excited that you decided to join us today while we do Base Camp Live. You can't see them, but I can. There's boys and girls sitting all over here in front of me. Then all the way back in the sound booth. And Mr. Scott, Miss Cheryl, and Mr. Alex right here. Today, we're doing something super special. Miss Cheryl is gonna host Base Camp Online and Base Camp Live. I don't know about you, but I had a blast this week. We had Sunday night, family fun night. That was an amazing movie. That movie was uh, The Greatest Showman. People were singing and dancing and laughing and having a great time. If you weren't able to make it, you don't worry. We're gonna have another movie night on a Friday night in just a couple more weeks. Have mom and dad check out the email because it will be sent right to you all so you can keep up with all the events. Wednesday night was amazing. It was so much fun. We had Nerf night. If you want to see the pictures of what we did at Nerf night, have mom and dad to go to Bible Center Kids on the Facebook page. There's all kinds of pictures there for you to show what we did at Nerf night. And this Wednesday night is another great night. It's called Kickball, kickball night and games right here. Starting at six o'clock, goes to 7.30, right here at Bible Center Church. We hope you can join us. Well, as you know, you're in Base Camp Online, we're Base Camp Live, and we're gonna be talking about salt, light, things that taste good, people going on hikes, stories, and all kinds of stuff. You hold on right there, because Base Camp is getting ready to start. this weekend two people had fun this weekend wow all right let's go cool. hey everybody let's start off by getting on your feet and getting pumped praising God hey you know what's really cool we through our thoughts through our actions through our words through our relationships we all want to do that in a way that honors God, right? So let's honor God now by getting up on our feet and praising Him in song. Down chicken! 
that not the way it's supposed to say go? Oh, I got it. What's up, peeps? Is that better? Uh, yes, it is. It's better. Hey, guys. Um, all right, obviously I'm struggling with the words today. I'm struggling with being cool, but I'm glad that you're here to help me. We've learned that our God is what? Indescribable and that he has no limits. So I want somebody to tell me what is our word of the month? Anybody out in base camp online know what the word of the month is? Karis, why don't you tell me what the word of the month is? It is creativity that is absolutely right. So creativity is imagining what you can do because you're created in God's image. Say it with me, loud and proud. Creativity, imagining what you could do because you're created in God's image. All right, so let's find out from the Haggis brothers how creativity works, okay? Hey there, I'm MC Haggis, and uh, this here is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. All right. This month is about creativity. Imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. Now, if you know me and Seamus work, you're probably thinking about the phrase creative genius. Am I right, Seamus? Right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you look up creative genius in the dictionary, it's not there, because it's two words. Anywho, me and Seamus have been trying to think of a way to show creativity, and we got nothing. I mean, we tried all kinds of things to spark some creativity. For instance, we uh, took some tin foil and some electrical tape and some toilet paper rolls nice. and we, we put them together and uh, we made a little rocket. And the result? Yeah. I mean, not a hint of creativity though. And look at this. Ugh. We didn't just bake some cookies. We, we baked cookies that included our favorite snacks in them. We, we made cookies with beef jerky bits, mmm, -hmm, and cheesy puffs, and, and, and french fries, but, you know, mouth-watering, but no spark of creativity. <sighs> we even knitted socks for sheep. I know, it's weird. You know, even the sheep were like, I'm not wearing those. <laughs> We even played some intense games of math bingo. That, that's where someone calls out the math problem and you try to find the answer on your bingo card. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem. Yay. Ah, okay, yeah. still, no creative ideas. Hey. I guess I'll just eat one of these original recipe cookies. The ones with the popcorn are my favorite. <laughs> They're very creative, Seamus. Hey, creative? What was I thinking? Up in the knee. Kick it. We've all got capacity for brain productivity, imagination proclivity, to imagine what we could do because we're made in God's image. Creativity. Word. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, on behalf of me and Seamus, I'd like to apologize for not thinking we were creative. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to have one of these cookies, too. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, what is this flavor? Hey! Oh, dog food! Hey. Mm. <laughs> All those Haggis brothers, they are crazy! All right, let's get back to our word of this month, creativity. And I want you guys to say it with me again. Everybody in Base Camp Live, you guys say it with me too. Ready? Creativity, imagining what you could do because you're created in God's image. Now, I heard all of you guys say that in Base Camp Live, but I didn't hear the kids here say it, so we're going to say it again really loud, okay? Creativity, imagining what you could do because you're created in God's image. That is awesome, guys. Now, our verse for this month is so beautiful. I love it. It is from Psalm 145, 3, and it says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. You guys want to say it with me? You guys say it with me too. Psalm 145, 3. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. 
No one can completely understand how great you are. Good job, guys. Thank you. All right, you guys ready to learn what this week's bottom line is? God created you to share his story. Oh, what a great opportunity that would be. So what kind of stories do you like to tell? Do you like to tell scary campfire stories? Do you like to tell stories of uh, that funny thing that happened on vacation last summer with your family? Guys, what kind of stories do you like to tell? Well, you know, some people like to tell Dr. Seuss stories or uh, Mr. Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar or Hungry Hippo or whatever that story is. Um, but here's a verse that is amazing. It's Psalm 89.15. And it said, blessed are those who have learned to shout praise to you. Lord, they live in the light of your kindness. Isn't that cool? Well, we're going to get an opportunity to shout praise to God with this next song. So everybody on your feet, let's sing loud. Um, let's see if your parents upstairs can hear you. Okay, so let's get started. Jesus with others. So let's take a look at a, a retro reel. I love these old black and white uh, movies and talk about what following God looks like. It's time again for Retro Reel. <laughs> oh, hello there. How are you? Good to hear. As we continue our Adventures in the World series, I want to put my hand on this globe and tell you something neato. For thousands of years, all over the world, there was a one commodity that was worth as much as gold. 
No, it wasn't pizza rolls or toilet paper, even though I do wish I had some right now. It was salt. It not only seasoned food, but it kept meat and vegetables from spoiling. Think beef jerky or the good old classic pickle. Well, today's adventure follows famed archaeologist Oklahoma Holmes, who is about to make a discovery that would change the world forever. And it starts right here in the Himalayas. Look, if I put a mustache on him, he looks just like your Uncle Henry. Uncle Henry has bigger ears and wears glasses. I can fix that. <laughs> See? You're right. You know, you're really creative. What does this mean? It means your uncle has really big ears. Oklahoma! Oklahoma, come quick! They found something! Let's go! Oh, oh, wait up, my leg's asleep. I wonder what it could be. A time capsule? You know I did one of those in third grade. I... It looks like a stone. There's stones all over the place. Look, one, two, three. No, Rofest, this one has writing on it. Let's dig her out and see what we got. Well, sweet bacon. It's picture writing. This tablet could be three to four thousand years old. Give or take a thousand years or so. I've only seen one like it, but we blew that one up accidentally. Well, friends, I would say this is easily four thousand years old. I would place it during the Morton Dynasty, which is exactly what we've been looking for. Well, man, don't just sit there. Can you read it? Sure. We dedicate this new beacon of light high up in the mountains so that it shines down and shows the world the good deeds you do. Where is this light, Oklahoma? Where King Morton put it. High atop Mount Iodized, in the lost city of salt. Does anyone know why we're bringing all this stuff? I know we like waffles, but this Belgian waffle maker is heavy. Oh, how much longer? There she is, Mount Iodized. That wasn't too long. That was the easy part. Climbing her steep slopes of death will be much more tricky. I'm out. Does anyone know what we're supposed to see when we get to the top? Maybe a little girl with an umbrella? <laughs> I'd cut the chatter. The air's so thin up here, your head might just explode. Good gracious! We're almost there! The summit is just over the ridge! Well, will you just look at that? The lost city of salt. Wait a minute. You mean this whole thing is made out of salt? Preposterous! Yep. The whole thing. King Morton was a creative and intelligent man. He also wanted to share God's story. So he built this city and lighthouse to point others to God. Come on, let's go take a look. Epic, we're gonna play a game now. It's called Epic Fillin. And I'm going to need some different types of words from you all. I'm going to need some help from my kids here at Base Camp Live. I'm going to need some nouns. You guys know that nouns are people, places, or things. I'm also going to need some adjectives, which are words that describe something like slimy, gooey, pretty, silly, lumpy. And I'm also going to need some verbs. Those are action words like jump, fly, cry, things like that, okay? So, if everybody participates and everybody helps out, I'm going to need you guys just to shout out some answers whenever I call out for a word. The first word I need is an adjective, so who can yell out a really good adjective for me? Dance, Dance I love it. All right, now I need a verb. Jump, okay. All right, now I need a noun. What is it? Beach. Oh, I love it. All right, now I need another noun. Kara. Kara. Uh, okay. A <laughs> Kara. That's gonna be funny. Now I need an adjective. Somebody yell out an adjective, really loud. Date. Okay, I can't hear you. Got to yell it out. Blue. Blue. Thank you. Uh, a verb. Sing. Sing. All right. Now I need another verb. It's an action word. What? I couldn't hear. Run. Another noun. It's a person, place, or thing. 
home. An adjective, which is a word that describes something. Gooey. Gooey. All right, now I need another noun. A church. All right. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. All right, let's see. That's a... Uh, uh, and now I need a verb. Just yell it out. Okay. Huh? Dimming, like dim the lights? Yeah. All right, another verb. Just yell it out. Yell it out. Yell another verb. I need a verb. Huh? All right, another verb. Whopping. Huh? Hop. Hop. A uh, noun. Yes. Shh. What is it, babe? Jesus. <laughs> All right. Another verb. Yell it out. Boxing. Boxing. Adjective. Pull your thing down, huh? Yeah, purple. Purple. I love it. A noun. Paris. Paris Grant. All right, another noun. Prince. Base camp. Last one. Adjective. Blue. Huh? Gone. Can you pull your mask down, babe? God, uh, God's not an adjective. What? Yes. Can you pull your mask down, babe? Pink. Pink. I love it. All right. We've got our story. Are you guys ready to hear it? Are you guys ready to hear it? This is called the best day ever. All right. Are you guys listening? Anthony kicked off his dance shoes before turning the corner to jump the stairs. He left them on the floor like two abandoned beaches. He took off, oh, he took a flying Kara and landed on his blue bed. He grabbed his game system and picked back up where he left off from the night before. As he sang on the controllers, he heard a whimper. He turned to see Spot, his awesome dog, running his tail with a home in his mouth. Spot, Spot clearly expected a gooey afternoon with his favorite human. Anthony sighed, put down the game, and put on his church on the way out of the room. He stopped to pick up his soccer ball, too just in case any of his friends saw him dimming outside and wanted to join the fun. He nearly tripped over his uh, slimy shoes downstairs, but stepped them up with his free hand. As he and Spot sat on the porch outside, Anthony hopped his shoes and looked around. Was anyone outside who would enjoy a pickup game on a random Tuesday afternoon? He saw a mom pushing her Eiffel Tower in a stroller. Nope. Then a teenage Jesus with headphones on boxing a mower. Nope. One final scan and all he saw was old Mr. Smith pushing his purple trash can back to Paris. <laughs> Looks like a simple game of base camp with Spot was all he could hope for today. He scratched Spot's head and stood up. At least, <coughs> excuse me, at least he can make his dog's day extra pink. Ha! Wasn't that a great story? Thank you guys for participating. Let's see what Jake has for us this week. And when we come back, Pastor Steve will take it from here.
Man, what I wouldn't give for a peanut. What's up everybody, it's me, Jacob, and today we're getting creative with light. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And God could tell you a thing or two about light. It was the first thing he created after all. Let there be light. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Did you know that light can travel at 186,000 miles per second? If you were in a spaceship, it would take you three days to get to the moon. Light can travel to the moon in about a second. Fly me to the moon. Let me burn in the stars. And never... You can use light in all kinds of creative ways. Not only can you make shadow puppets, <laughs> you need light to take pictures and make videos. This won't do at all. This is terrible lighting. Lights! No, no, down, down with the lights. No, too bright. Thank you. You can use lights to make a concert more exciting. You can even use light to communicate. S O S. Need help. I'm out of chocolate. Sad emoji. I don't actually know Morse code. In today's story, we're going to learn about another use for light. In fact, we're going to learn how you and me can be the light. I can make a bee. I can make a bee. It's, you gotta get the wings. Uh, oh, okay. Bee. I'm a bee. Bzz, bzz, bzz. See you in a few. Hey, Basecamp Online and Basecamp Live. What can you make with a big funny light that's shining in your face and maybe you're over here making some different puppets with your hands. Maybe you can make a giraffe or a dog, a bee, or maybe you can make a house. Or maybe for you, you can make a whole castle. I have no idea how to do that. I was not really great at making those shadow puppets like some people. My grandfather could make incredible ones. And he could tell stories like no one I ever imagined with shadow puppets. Maybe because he used to tell me that he did that when he was a kid in his bedroom before there was TV. I mean, that was a long, long time ago. Oh, so I guess that's where you learn all kinds of stuff like that, to tell stories with shadows in your hands. And today we're gonna learn that God created you, me, and all of us to share his story. A person reveals the image of God to everybody. And when we walk outside, the trees, the birds, the flowers, the wind, and everything we experience reveals that there is a creator in heaven to tell us that there is so much more to this life. And I kind of imagine, as all of us have been going through a lot of different trials, tests, hard things, you and I kind of feel like there's a lack of hope sometimes. And we have a hard time sharing Jesus' story because maybe for you, you're bummed out. For others of us, we're just excited to be alive during this coronavirus time. And someday you're going to share this story of coronavirus with somebody else. But before we go into any more of that, I want to jump back in to this day. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Jesus was with, was with the disciples traveling on a thing called a plateau. Where was he traveling? Plateau. On a plateau. That's right. And it was like a big hill up somewhere where everybody could see. And his disciples were with him. And as they went, the sun was shining down. It was a warm day. And Jesus with all of his disciples and all of these people following him, gave us the Sermon on the Mount. What did he give us? The Sermon on the Mount. 
Join in with me. What did Jesus give me? That's right. He gave that to us. And one of the disciples, his name was Matthew, wrote this all down for you and I to be able to read. What was the disciple's name? Matthew. Matthew. Very good. In Matthew chapter 5, it begins the Sermon on the Mount. And it says stuff like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And imagine Jesus on a big hill talking to boys and girls, brothers and sisters, moms and dads, maybe some aunts and uncles and some grandparents. Well, they didn't probably have walkers then. I don't know how they got around. Maybe they had like, like beds they carried around, the grandparents followed. I have no idea, but Jesus had a big crowd and he continued by saying this. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Then he said, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. Then as he continues to say all this, Jesus then says this. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Well, everybody looking around looks at Jesus like, what are you talking about? I mean, there's no way if there's salt and it loses its saltiness, you can make it salty again. I get the idea that Jesus was sitting on this big mountainside, this hill, a plateau, and he looks over and all the people might have seen off in the distance a man with a big bag of salt throwing it out because look what he says right here. He says this, it is no longer good for anything, anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. Well, what a waste of salt. I mean, I don't know about you, but I like salt on some things, and we're going to get too far ahead of ourselves, so let's get back to our Bible reading. You also, not only are you and I who are called followers of Jesus, salt, but we're this. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. So Jesus gives us these two pictures, these two items, these two things you and I can hold on to, we can look at, and we can see how we're to live in God's amazing kingdom. Number one, he gave us salt. What did he give us? Salt. That's right. He says, hey, if you're my followers, you are salt. Now, I don't know about you, but I love Popcorn. Anybody else in here like popcorn? I love popcorn. I love eating popcorn in the morning. I love eating popcorn in the daytime. I love eating popcorn sitting back with my feet kicked up, the big old bowl, some butter on it, eating it while I'm watching a movie. You know what I love on my popcorn besides butter? I love salt. Salt on my popcorn. It takes the flavor in like, enhances it way out through the roof. And Jesus said, you are salt. Just like salt makes popcorn take that, taste that much better. When we go through life and we show other boys and girls who Jesus is, we make life taste that much better. So Jesus calls his followers salt. And because of that, when we go through life in the middle of this coronavirus, you know what happens? It makes things taste better better when we act like Jesus called us to act. And you know, there's another thing we put salt in. We put salt in chocolate cake. Did you know that? You put salt in chocolate cake. It's kind of like adding, when you take salt and add it to chocolate cake, it's like adding a disco party right to that chocolate cake. And you know, when we act like Jesus, when tough stuff happens, especially in the middle of coronavirus, you know what happens, boys and girls? We add a disco party to life. It brings out so much more and it makes life so much more meaningful for everyone. Did you know you need salt just to live? It helps keep all of our body functions flowing properly. You see, God created you and me to tell his story. 
And that's why when he gave us the Bible and he told us that we're salt, do you know what happens? It's sharing to us like, hey, look, salt makes a difference on all of the food that we eat. And when we live and love other people like Jesus did, we make a difference in their life. Salt was super valuable. People used it because there were no refrigerators. They would pack their meat in salt to preserve it. And you know, because we have Jesus in our heart, if you've accepted him as your savior, you're preserved forever to have a home in heaven and to make a difference in this world, sharing Jesus' story. But Jesus didn't stop there, did he, with salt? He also said what? We are salt and light. Can you guys say that? Salt and light. That's right. Jesus said we are light, pointing people where to go. You know, boys and girls, sometimes when I walk into base camp, the lights aren't on like this. It's actually super duper dark. There are no windows in base camp. And there's no lights when the lights are off. And so sometimes I'm walking in and I trip and I bang and I bump into all kinds of stuff. Just like you do when you're trying to walk through your house and you can't see it all. But you know what? In life, there are boys and girls, people everywhere that are walking through this life and don't know where to go. Jesus says his followers are the light of the world that point people where to go how to live because God created everything we all see and as followers of Jesus we can help others see where to go we can protect them from dangerous places just like that this picture the open sea is a dangerous but beautiful place it's filled with all kinds of life it's also filled with all kinds of danger and lighthouses protect us they guide us to where to go and where not to go they tell us there's a big dangerous place of the of the land right here and to steer away because it's getting super shallow candles lit in a house help people see they also warm up the environment some candles even smell amazing have you ever walked into your grandmother's house or your mom's house and you had a candle lit and you're like Oh, I could just eat that candle right now. Anybody ever have that before? I know I have. My wife burns candles and it smells delicious. Sometimes candles also, they give us warmth when we feel lonely and we feel alone. Jesus says that boys and girls, you and I who are followers of his are the light to point people Sometimes we're tempted to hide that light because we're afraid of what other people might think. And Jesus says, don't hide it. Show it and reveal it. Because you know what it does? When we live and we love other people like Jesus, we actually show people there's a God in heaven. It says this. Listen to what he, Jesus said. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds, not for Mr. Steve, they see your good deeds and glorify God who is in heaven. So when we do good things, we're salt and light, we point other people to Jesus. You know, we can do it this way, by just hanging out with our friends. Somebody's feeling lonely and needing some encouragement. Maybe for you, you get on the FaceTime and you FaceTime a friend and you talk to him. Maybe you go down the street and you hang out with somebody that just needs some encouragement. Maybe it's that old lady or the old man that needs their yard raked or just needs some sticks picked up in their yard and you hang out with them. You know, we help other people when we stop doing what we were doing and help them. Like your brother and sister needs some help on their homework or maybe cleaning up their bedroom or putting some stuff away. Maybe your mom needed some things picked up around the house. Maybe you have taken some time to do a bake sale, to give of what you can do with your creativity. Maybe you drew a picture. Maybe you baked some food. Maybe you did something different. 
And you did all this because you realized God created you to share his story. And we, when we're salt and when we're light, we share the good news of Jesus. Boys and girls, out on base camp, online, I want you to know you were created to share God's story. Boys and girls, how can you become salt and light where you live? I know sometimes it's challenging where we're stuck at home or maybe not able to do everything that we wished we could, but pretty soon things will be open and return to normal. But let's use our creativity to find ways to be salt and light when things are a little bit more challenging. Let's go and see what Jake learned because God created you and me to share his story. Jesus said that I am a light. He said that you are a light and we should let our light shine so others can see it. And when we shine our lights, it will help point people to God. So how do we shine our lights? Well, we can give someone a helping hand. Oh, goodness. Oh. We can cheer someone on. You can listen when someone else needs to talk. That's my ear. Listening. Only you can shine your light the way you can. So get creative. All you have to do is treat others the way Jesus did. Love people, serve people, and treat people like they matter. Then you'll be giving people a glimpse of God's story. You'll show people how much God loves them and how much they matter to him. Here's the one thing to remember today. God created you to share his story. Tell people with your words what God has done or use your actions to point people to him. No matter what, let your light shine. I know I'll never forget that. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Ugh. Bye. Ugh. Okay. You know, boys and girls, when I think about God has created you to share his story, I think that you and I can take on the thought of being a missionary to our family, to our neighbors, and carry that great story, that great message that Jesus came, born of a baby, died on a cross, and three days later rose again to pay for my sins and your sins, to rescue us so we could have a relationship with God. And you know, boys and girls in Base Camp Live, that's what God wants. He wants you and I to remember that he wrote a great story in your life and in my life to tell other boys and girls how Jesus loves us and loves the entire world. Let's say our bottom line together one more time. God created you to share his story. Let's pray. And I'm going to say goodbye to those on Basecamp Online. Basecamp Online, we're going to pray here in just a minute. We thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be here at the same time, the same place, at Bible Center Kids, Basecamp Live, and Basecamp Online. Catch you here next week. See you later. Bye-bye.